I had the privilege of being asked to lead the United States effort on the Human Genome Project in 1993 after Jim Watson had gotten the whole thing underway in the U.S. We could never have done the Human Genome Project without the partnership of the United Kingdom and particularly the effort carried out at the Sanger Institute led by John Solston initially and then by Jane Rogers. As a result of doing a great deal of sequencing on this little tiny worm, the nematode, C. neuroditis, we learn, that's to say, my lab and Bob Waterston's lab, to sequence rather well. And so we got incorporated into the Human Genome Project. When Bob and I took on the challenge, the machines didn't work very well, but then quickly they speeded up. So the change in the tools were very important. The technology that we were using was, was quite challenging, and so there was a lot of work that needed to be done to try and get this isolation of chromosomes working. But once we'd achieved that, it, it, was, um, it was fantastic, it was really exciting. To do the Human Genome Project, we were loading machines day in, day out, morning and evening, just to keep the samples on. Everybody was really motivated to work together with a common purpose. Everybody really helped each other, uh, which was really efficient and really refreshing. And obviously it filled you with great pride to be part of it. But once we got to 98, oh, we knew we could do it. It was just a question of exactly how, exactly when, and making sure that we kept the rights to it in the public domain. Back in 1999 and 2000, we really fought this war against the company was trying to gain a monopoly over control and so this is a lasting achievement that will, you know, the human genome will be used forever in the public domain and it could have been a commercial entity but it's actually available for everybody. Although everyone said it wasn't a race, it was really and we won. It was everywhere and everyone knew about it and even now when I speak to people um, and say oh I was involved in the human genome project, they're like oh you did that. And also, it's being taught in school now as well. So my kids can go to school and go, my mum's mentioned that, I know that she worked on that, and dad as well, actually. <laughs> this is not like an individual science project, you know, like finding out how something, how a particular thing works, or finding out how to cure a disease. It's not like that. It's collecting fundamental information and making it available. Therefore, it's obviously extremely important in this area, more than any other, to be open and share everything. It's a long-term project to understand the human body fully, to understand how genes act in different places, from that, for example, to understand much more about the side effects of drugs, to understand what you're doing instead of just randomly poking around and doing endless trials. So this is the promise and this is what's being fulfilled with the human genome. I do think when people look back in a few hundred years and ask, what were the exciting things that happened about this time in history? The Human Genome Project will rank very high it's probably the most significant organized scientific adventure that humankind has ever been on, and it's looking like it's turning out pretty well.